guys, welcome to Dylan's Little Hobbies, and today, oh my god, you know what? My Hero Academia Season 3 Episode 1 came out not too long ago, and all week, all week long, I have been thinking about My Hero Academia. And you know, it's true, usually during whatever I do, take a shower, uh, take out the trash, actual work, or if I'm sleeping, I'm thinking of either two things. Star Wars or My Hero Academia. That's pretty much my life right now, is Star Wars or anime. And the latest anime that has come out is, of course, My Hero Academia. And my god, it is such a fantastic series. And because of that, I decided to watch some of uh, My Hero Academia, my favorite moments. Like, you know, the first three episodes of My Hero Academia, the, uh... The tournament arc, some of the stain arc. All Might vs. Nomu was incredible, for God's sakes. Um, but you know what really stuck out to me? Is the episode called... And I can't remember what number it is. I'll, I'll put somewhere so you guys can know what number episode it is. But uh, it's called Listen Up, A Tale from the Past. And that episode, let me tell you about that episode. Fantastic. I, I really like how the creator, the writer, Hokoshi, remember I read the manga too. I just love what he does at the end of this episode. Not only do we get to learn more about One for All, but we get to finally find out who the big villain is going to be for My Hero Academia, and that's of course All for One. And the image, the very it, gruesome, uh, it's actually kind of scary image that we have of All for One at the end of that episode. Oh my god. I, I just absolutely love it. Or if you're reading the manga, of course, at the end of the chapter. I, I just absolutely love it. And now, I am a manga reader. I am not going to spoil anything that happens in Season 3. But let me tell you this, let me tell you this, we are going to meet my, uh, my Hero Academia's biggest villain in this season, okay? And either everybody is going to end up absolutely hating the guy in a good way, or everyone is going to end up loving this guy. I, I don't know, there, there's, I, I don't think anyone's going to uh, take a look at this villain and call him a bad villain, because let me tell you, the way he acts uh, in in the manga, and of course the way he'll act in the show, oh my god, I just cannot wait. And I can't wait to actually hear his voice. I wonder uh, what, what they're going to do for the voice actor of All for One. I, I cannot wait. I, I cannot wait. It's going to be brilliant. But thinking of him, it really started making me think about what possibly could his origin be. Look, here, here's the thing. Many, many villains, especially in shows like this, especially in, uh, in American comic books, they're so one-dimensional. Now, of course, if you actually are interested in them, you look for more, and I'm certain that there's more information about them, but, like, there's many villains in like Iron Man and Spider-Man, and if you want to go DC, uh, I don't know much about, I have no idea about, who, who is Superman's villain? I, I don't know. I, I am not a DC guy, sorry. But uh, in those, the villains are always so one-dimensional, and we really don't get to know why they're doing what they are doing. You know what I mean? As opposed to anime and you know what, I'm going to compare to this to, of course, Naruto again, because Naruto, I'm sorry guys, Naruto was the first anime manga that I've ever gotten into. And uh, the, the one that comes to mind is Nagato from Naruto, a.k.a. Pain. Pain, you know what, he seemed like a one-dimensional character, very much so, but when you actually get to learn that guy's backstory... It's insane. And you know what? Itachi, my favorite character from Naruto, Itachi. When I first met him, when we first saw him in the story, I thought he was a prick. 
to be honest with you. You, know, you, I've, you just seem like a guy who kills for no reason. But when you actually get to hear his backstory, it makes Sasuke from Naruto look like an absolute crybaby you know, compared to Itachi's backstory. Oh my god. That's why Itachi's my favorite character from from Naruto. And that's how I think that One for All is going to be, but that made me start speculating on what his origin could possibly be. So, give me a second here. I am going to tell you now, again, this is not revealed in the manga, this isn't spoilers or anything stupid like that. This is a fanboy just fanboying out. I think I came up with somewhat of a theory origin for One for All that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. So, here we go, here we go. Uh, so, what do we know about One for All? Well, we know he's the big number one villain of My Hero Academia. We also know that he also gave uh, All Might the injury that he has. We also know that he used to have a little brother, and we know that he's at least 300 years old. You know, he, he's very, very old. And we know they used to have a little brother who, of, uh, who after giving him a quirk, meshed with another quirk, creating one for all. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's incredible. The, the way the creator uh, um, wrote the story, I, I think it's just absolutely incredible. I can go through that all day, but anyway. But that's all we know. And here's the, th here's the thing. When we hear that story from All Might, we have to take in account that that story, there's always two sides to every story. And the story that All Might told us is what All Might believes. But what if there is a whole lot more that goes into what happened to One for All? You, you know what I mean? For one thing, I mean, let, let's think about it. So, One for All probably came, comes from a time where quirks were brand new. And at the time, we even see in All Might's, in All Might's little story there, that people weren't very happy and were probably scared of people with quirks. And if you know anything about uh, human history, you know that if somebody is scared of something, then it instantly causes war. If, they are, if they're scared of something and they don't understand it, it instantly creates war. So what I think is maybe one for all and his little brother we're probably just kids, you know, we're probably just kids, and it wasn't their fault that they had quirks, you know, it's probably human, human evolution, that, that's a big thing with My Hero Academia and all these quirks, is it's just human evolution. So I think perhaps they were just kids and they grew up in pretty much a war zone. And I'm pretty sure if, if, if you grew up in a war zone, I never grew up in a war zone. But I'm pretty sure if you grew up in a war zone, you would want to end that war. And as One for All grew up, grew more in power, he probably became a soldier, a leader, and probably fought and won in the war against people with quirks. You know? that I think there would be a war between people with quirks and people without. And I really would like them to go... A lot more in depth in that period of time. Hopefully, one day, uh, a eventually, the creator might even go more in depth into what happened there. But uh, again, I think he might have been a good guy at first, became the leader of Japan, and then eventually decided, you know, as the leader of Japan, that he was going to try to figure out what's going on. What, why do we have these quirks? I'm not saying that he became a scientist, but I'm saying he probably paid scientists to figure out what quirks are. Like, uh, this is the way I look at it. If anyone knows about Benjamin, this is a real-world scenario. Benjamin 
actually, yeah, Ben Franklin, actually, the guy did, uh, did so much research for the human anatomy to the point where he actually dug up graves and cut into people to learn more about human anatomy. And if you learn anything, it's not just Benjamin Franklin, uh, uh, the history of the human anatomy, um, those people, literally, to find out what we know today, they had to go against the law and bury people up and go through their bite. Like, it's totally disgusting and it's totally terrible. But I think something similar might have happened here. I don't think All for One was creating nomus, essentially, for the sake of creating nomus. I think it was more like um, he wanted to learn more of his power and he wanted to know more of how quirks work and through different types of experiments and through a whole bunch of other scientific information, we learned, he learned more about quirks and everything we know about quirks today is probably because of the research him and his scientists probably did. Now, why did he turn evil? Well, essentially, it could be that he never really turned evil. Um, not to mention, he had a very sickly brother, even though he was you know, I think he lived to be like 20, 30 years old or something. He was obviously very sick. And being uh, and being that his little brother was probably his only family, let, let's face it, his parents probably died or his parents probably uh, uh, um, said, you have a quirk, they were scared of him, and they threw him to the streets. You know, with him having a little brother, he probably didn't want his little brother to die. And he was probably trying to find a way to save his little brother. He probably gave his little brother that quirk to save his life. You know, that quirk that meshed with the little brother's quirk, because they originally thought it was quirkless. Turns out he had a useless quirk, but once it merged with the quirk that his brother gave him, it became one for all, you know, which is just, I really just like the story. I like the way the author wrote that. Yeah, and after that, you know, you know, after his brother would uh, die and everything, I think he would just try to figure out more about quirks and learn more about quirks. And the problem would be to uh, increase his uh, information about quirks. He probably needs to find out what created all for one. I mean, one for all. And the problem is... He can't take one for all like he can take those other quirks. Because the problem is with one for all, it can only be given. It cannot be taken by force. So, with that, you know, creators, the, the people uh, that had one for all, probably, uh, I mean, all for, yeah, one for all, probably didn't want to give their quirk back, obviously. And... Uh, and uh, people probably eventually grew out of it. Everyone grew, grew a quirk, and he probably got forgotten. He probably just ended up being a crazy guy who lived forever. You know what I mean? And they probably looked at him like a villain. To the point where now it's, uh, it's like, whoever calls me a villain, fine. I did what I did for mankind. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, that is my theory. Like, share, subscribe for more. Let me know down in the comments below. How excited are you for season 3? One for all. All Might. Versus all for one. All for one. <laughs> I cannot wait to see it. And I really am interested in knowing why all, all for one. Oh, I mean, yeah, all for one is the way he is. You know, I, I, I hope that eventually we'll get his backstory. I'm not sure when, but I hope we do. Obviously, it'll come out in the mega before it comes out in the anime. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Bye!